This is Math 142. We're going to take a peek at section 7.3. And on this section um, 7.3, um, we're going to do what's called double and half angles. And we're going to build these relationships. These are just some more formulas for us to use. We're going to build these formulas off of this work that we've done with the sum and product. I'm sorry, sum and difference um, relationships for sine and cosine. So we know these from last time. And so for the double angle, let's think about this. What if we had, um, let's see, sine of an angle plus itself, theta plus theta. And notice that is the same as sine 2 theta. So this is what we could call a double angle, right? Like twice the angle. Um, so sine of something plus something else is this. So let's write this out. This would be uh, sine theta cos theta plus cosine theta sine theta. And since we're multiplying, sine times cosine is the same as cosine times sine. So essentially we can say we have um, 2 times sine theta times cosine theta. So this right here is our first, um, our first relationship like this. And we could do this again with cosine. So we could say cosine of theta plus theta. And notice that is the same as twice the angle. And again, we'll, we can expand it out just using this relationship right here. So we have um, cosine theta times cosine theta. Oh, and it's opposite operator for cosine, so that should be minus. So notice that is cosine squared minus sine squared. So there's a relationship for, uh, for cosine. But actually, cosine has a bunch of them, um, and we can, we can dress these up using some Pythagorean identities. I'm going to move stuff around a little bit, and then I will, I will deal with that. So, so far we have um, sine, double angle, sine of 2 theta is 2 times sine theta cosine theta. And again, you could just do it by using this expansion. Cosine of 2 theta, we could write as cosine squared minus sine squared. But let's think about that Pythagorean identity. We know that um, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So one way you could think about this is subtract that cosine squared from both sides. And we could replace this sine with it. So we could replace this with 1 minus cosine squared. We could distribute that negative into there. So notice we have cosine squared minus 1 plus, right, because you're subtracting a negative, cosine squared. So that's two cosine squareds when we add those together. So we could say this is the same as cosine squared theta. Uh, two of them, sorry, minus one. So that is another way that we could express this. It's the same relationship, but it's just another equivalency. We would just choose it depending on our context, depending on what we wanted. So we could also say cosine of two theta is also this. And similarly, we could do it again, but instead of solving here for sine, let's solve this for cosine. So subtract sine squared from both sides, and we know that cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So replace this cosine squared with that, and we get 1 minus sine squared. So it's 1 minus 2 of those. And there's another way that we could represent it. So the thing I want to point out is here are this collection of formulas. We have sine of 2 theta equals that. Cosine of 2 theta equals all these. They're all the same thing. They're just different ways that I could write uh, the same thing. And there is a, it's kind of the double angle formula right there. There is one for tangent as well. And I'll, I'll get it up here as well in case you want to use it. And if you remember that tangent formula um, for just tangent of like theta plus theta, you will see that, uh, you'll see the pieces. We build it up the same way. So these are other things. Keep in your notes. You know, just keep down beside you uh, while you're doing, doing this sort of work so that you can, you can check them and start to internalize these. So we're told that a tangent of theta, tangent of some angle, is negative 3 fourths, and that it terminates in quadrant 2. So that's just kind of the given part. And then the question here would be, 
If this is true, what would um, sine of twice that angle be equal to? Or cosine of twice that angle, or tangent of twice that angle. So what um, we're going to do then is start with a sketch. And that'll let us know, you know, we can find like sine, cosine values of that, of that angle then. So we're in quadrant two. So somewhere here, this thing terminates. That's my angle theta. And I know that tangent is, um, you know, rise over run or y over x. So that negative, knowing that it's in quadrant two, that helps me think about where that negative is going to be. So this distance here is three. This distance here is four. And if I think about direction, this is going up, so that's positive. This is going to the left, that's negative. That makes sense. Three divided by negative four is negative three-fourths. So that gives me that tangent. Uh, I could use Pythagorean theorem to figure out that this is a five. So then I know both sine and cosine of that angle. Sine is y over r, right, or opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is uh, x over r, or adjacent, over hypotenuse. So there's those values. So then now that I know those sine and cosine values, I'm going to refer back to these to figure out what double these angles are. So now notice what we're saying is if we took this angle and doubled it, right, like did that rotation again, we're going to end up somewhere and we're going to find the sine, cosine, and tangent values of it. We're not going to care. We're not going to worry about what the actual angle is. We're just going to figure out what double the angle would be, what the sine, cosine, and tangent values of double the angle would be. So sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta times cosine theta, right? And we know what those are. Sine theta is 3 fifths. So let's replace this with the 3 fifths. And these are times, right? And cosine is negative 4 fifths. And 2 is just 2 over 1. And when I multiply fractions, I multiply, I multiply straight across. So 1 times 5 times 5, that's a 25. Um, 2 times 3 times negative 4 is negative 24. Great. So the sine of double this angle would be negative 24 fifths. Let's do cosine. And for cosine, you can use whatever of these you want to use. I'm going to use cosine squared minus sine squared just because it's the first one. I don't know that it's any better than the other ones. Just a preference thing. And let's see, cosine is negative 4 fifths. Sine is 3 fifths, so we're going to end up squaring that. And let's go. Negative times a negative is positive, so this is going to end up being 16 20 fifths. Whoops, 16. Minus 9 20 fifths. 16 minus 9 is 7. So cosine would be 7 20 fifths. And then for tangent, um, if you want to use the formula, you can use the formula, right? 2 times the tangent over 1 minus tangent squared. Or since you know sine and cosine, tangent is sine over cosine. So we could also say that it's just sine over cosine, right? Negative 24 fifths divided by 7 uh, 20 fifths. Sorry, that's 20 fifths, which is negative 24 sevenths. I'm going to do a verification example next. So I want to verify that 1 plus sine 2 theta equals sine, square, uh, sine theta plus cosine theta squared. Now, there's a couple ways you could go about doing this. Um, you could use the left-hand side or the right-hand side to expand out. Let me look at the pieces that I have here. Sine 2 theta. I know that sine 2 theta is 2 times sine theta times cos theta. That might help me. Um, I think what I'll do instead, though, I'm going to multiply out this right-hand side. So sine plus cosine squared. That, that sine plus cosine times itself, right? So this is the same as that. So sine times sine is sine squared. Cosine times sine. Sine times cosine. That's the same thing twice. So I'm going to say this is uh, plus 2 sine times cosine. And then cosine times cosine is cosine squared. So let me look at these pieces and see what I have got here. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. There's Pythagorean identity right there. There's my 1. Oh, and look, sine 2 theta is that, right? Like, 
Let me scroll on up here. Sine 2 theta is that. So yeah, those are equivalent. I could rewrite that as sine 2 theta, and they are the same thing. So the next thing I want to talk about is reduction formulas. And reduction formulas, um, they come really handy in calculus, actually. They help us um, kind of shift something down in um, if it has a, a, a power in it. So here is what we'll start thinking with. We know that cosine of 2 theta, we know it has several representations. I'm just going to grab this representation, the 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Now, what I want you to notice is I'm going to solve this for sine squared. I'm going to get sine squared all alone. So, um, I think first thing that I'll do is I'm going to add 2 sine squared to both sides. I'm just trying to get sine squared all alone. So if I add this to both sides, I have 2 uh, sine squared theta plus cosine 2 theta equals 1. I just did that because it's negative over here. I just made it positive. And now I'm going to subtract this cosine 2 theta from both sides. So far, so good. Trying to get sine squared alone. Divide by 2, right? Divide both sides by 2. And I get this, which is really convenient. Like if I have something in terms of sine squared and I don't want to deal with sine being squared, I can rewrite it as 1 minus cosine of 2 theta divided by 2. Notice it just came out of that um, double angle formula. I'm going to grab this and put it up there, because this is another formula for us to know and be able to use. Uh, similarly, I could go through similar algebraic arguments um, to do the same thing for cosine squared and for tangent squared, because uh, notice that there's a tangent squared here, there's a cosine squared here, but here's what they end up being. All right, so these are these reduction formulas, and uh, here's an example of how you, could, how you could use them. And again, what they do is they just let us rewrite these sine to a power, cosine to a power, tangent to a power in a, in a, lower, um, in a lower power. We kind of expand it out and make it so we don't have cosine to, uh, to an exponent. So for example, if I had cosine to the fourth, and I'll just use x. Well, let's see. Cosine to the fourth is cosine squared squared. So I could think of this as this. My goal here is to get this so I don't have any exponents in this representation, but it's still equal to this. So something cosine uh, squared squared would be the same as, well, cosine squared is this. So I'm going to replace cosine squared with that. And notice that it's squared. And um, if I multiply this out, this becomes, if I square that whole thing, it's a 1 plus 2 of these cosine 2x's plus cosine squared 2x all over 4. So I still have a cosine squared in here, but I can get rid of it now. Notice what I did was I shifted this down. I've got some terms here that don't have exponents, and then I just have to do it to this as well. These, these are all divided by 4, so I'm actually going to just divide all these by 4. So 1 divided by 4 is 1 fourth, just to make them look like, you know, separate terms. 2 divided by 4 is 1 half, and then 1 divided by 4 is 1 fourth. Okay, so I've got rid of the fourth power, and I shifted it down to a second degree. So now I'm going to do that replacement again just with this part. Again, my goal is to make it so I don't have any exponents in this at all. So all of this, I'm going to keep. And then one-fourth times uh, cosine squared of 2x. Well, I can expand this out again, right? Cosine squared of something is... 1 plus cosine of double the thing, right? So cosine of double the 2x, right? 2 theta. In this case, the theta is a 2x, so 2 theta would be 4x all over 2. 
So let me expand this out a little bit then. Um, so this is basically like the one fourth goes into that, and that is like an eighth. So I could think of this as one eighth plus one eighth cosine to the four uh, cosine of four x, and then all of this I keep. No changes there. And then one last thing I can do, I can add this one-eighth to this one-fourth, which is three-eighths. So it's three-eighths plus this plus that part. And there it is. And what this is showing is that cosine to the 4x, notice we've reduced the power, right? So now there's, it's all cosine to the first, but these are equivalent. Cosine to the, uh, cosine x to the fourth power is the same as this. That's how reduction uh, formulas, formulas work. It's kind of interesting. Like it worked really nice when that was even. If it's, if it's odd, if that power is odd, so let's say we have sine cubed, something like that. What we can do is we can rewrite it. Like we can um, kind of factor out one sign to make this make this an even. So we could say this is the same as sine of 2x times sine squared of 2x. And then from there, uh, we could expand it out. And it, it won't be too bad because we know uh, sine squared of 2x, we have it over here. There's one minus cos 2x over 2. And the thing to be careful about is this gets doubled, right? So it's a 4x, and that's times sine of 2x. And if you, you know what you could do is you could take this one half out. You could write this as one half times sine of 2x times 1 minus cosine of 4x, and you're there, and it's expanded out. All right, there is uh, one more formula for us to talk about, one more type of formula here to talk about. We've done double angle, we've done reduction, we want to talk about half angle as well. And we will build them up so we can see where they come from. Um, they're, they're actually pretty straightforward, the way that they work. So we know that sine squared of alpha, I'm sorry, sine squared of theta is this. And we know that this is always double that. So what we could do is we could say, let theta just equal um, alpha over 2. So then we, we could write, the, rewrite this as uh, sine squared of alpha over 2. And since that is twice that angle, that's just going to be an alpha now. 1 minus cosine of the angle over 2. And now we are almost there. I'm going to square root both sides. So I just have sine of a half of an angle. So if I square root both sides, this is where it kind of gets interesting, I think. Sine of half of an angle is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of the angle over 2. And there's our first one. And now this plus or minus, you have to resolve it. You're the, you're the person who has to go in and decide if you're going to use the plus or minus. And it's going to be context. You're going to think about this angle, whatever it is. You might not know its sign value, but you do know where it terminates, right? Like if this were to terminate in the third quadrant down in here, you know you would choose the negative case because sign's going to be negative here. So that plus or minus, the formula doesn't give you an automatic answer. Uh, you have to interpret it. So here's one of your half-angle relationships. The other ones we could get the same way. Solve this out, solve this out, right? Take half of out theta and then solve it out. Um, I'm just going to write them here because you don't need to see me do the proofs for them all. So there's our half angles. Uh, here's what a question might look like, a half angle question would look like in our practice. We know that tangent of some angle is 8 fifteenths. 
and it's in quadrant 3. So what would sine of half of that angle be? Tangent of half that angle be? And so on. So let's get our bearings. First thing we're going to do is sketch a picture, just like what we almost always do with these types of problems. <laughs> let's sketch a picture first. So we are in quadrant 3. And the tangent of our angle, oh, it's alpha, is 8 fifteenths. So like rise over run, y over x. So this would be 8, and this would be 15. But pay careful attention to direction, because notice this is going back and this is going down. So this is a negative 15, and this is a negative 8, which still works, right? Because negative 8 divided by negative 15 is positive 8 fifteenths. So uh, we could do Pythagorean theorem to get this distance right here. It's 17. So what's nice about these ones is all we need for all of these is cosine, right? These are all in terms of cosine. So let's figure that out. Uh, cosine of alpha of the, of the uh, original angle, cosine's width, is negative 15 uh, over 17. Okay, so let's use that to find these. We'll let's refer back to these formulas. So sine is plus or minus. We're going to have to resolve that plus or minus. We'll get there. Square root of 1 minus cosine of the angle. We just figured out cosine of alpha is negative 15 seventeenths over 2. All right, so we've got some thinking to do here. This angle, notice this angle, it's between... Um, 180 and 270. So we know that 180 uh, is less than the angle, which is less than 270. Now, if we cut this thing in half, in other words, we go half of alpha, we know it's going to have to be between 90 and 135, which puts it like somewhere in here, puts it in the second quadrant. And so when I think about the second quadrant, I know that sine, that goes up, sine's going to be positive, cosine's going to be negative, and since tangent is the slope, it's going down, tangent's going to be negative. So that resolves all my plus or minuses for me. So this one, this first one is going to be positive. So I'm going to resolve this one uh, minus that over that. And, um, you know, if you're feeling real comfortable with fractions, you can, of course, do it however you want to do it. I think I'm going to use my calculator. So I'm just going to think about that numerator. Uh, 1 minus negative 15 seventeenths is this, which if I think about that as a fraction, is that divide it by 2. I get 16 over 17. The square root of 16 is 4. And if I rationalize that, get that square root of 17 out of the denominator, denominator, I get that. Okay. Cosine is going to be negative. And if I refer back to this, it's the 1 plus cosine of the angle. Grab my calculator again. And let's see, I the, started out with 1 plus 15 seventeenths. That's going to get divided by 2. Give me that answer as a fraction. 1 17. So um, square root of 1 is 1. Oh, and it's negative. Don't forget my negative. So it's negative 1 over square root of 17. Rationalize that denominator is negative square root of 17 over 17. And these are exact answers. I will ask for exact answers on these. And then notice tangent is um, a little bit more work. 1 minus cosine over 1 plus cosine. So it's basically this one over that one. And tangent's going to be negative. We already determined that. I'm just going to do these on my calculator again. Uh, 1 plus that. I, I did them a while ago, so I'm just going to pull it back up. So I don't have to retype it. So the plus case is boop, 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 2 seventeenths, and the plus case goes in the denominator. The minus case goes in the numerator. 
32 seventeenths. And the seventeenths go, so I've got 32 over 2, which is 16. Negative square root of 16 is negative 4. Great. And there's, there's all my pieces. So as you are working these formulas uh, and trying to use them, get that practice in, pay careful attention to what they say. Um, notice the similarities between reduction and half angles. It's very helpful. Message me with any questions you have um, and or post them in the forums.